Washington Football Live, it is hot, it is steamy. The team is in the bubble, so the field is empty behind us, but doesn't keep us from talking. We're just not allowed in the bubble, so we can't show you really anything from the bubble. Uh, time to bring in Logan Campbell, the third member of our team here, for what is trending now, and this is presented by Bank of America. Logan. Thanks, Julie. Well, we all know Kelvin Harmon was in the running to being Washington's one of Washington's top wide receivers, but unfortunately, Back in July, he tore his ACL. We all know how hard that an ACL injury is to come back from. It takes months, even sometimes up to a year, to get back from that injury. But two days ago, Kelvin Harmon posted a video of him walking. Yes, you heard me right. And yes, it might be in a pool, but he is, he is on all 10 toes. And guys, it's just been a month and he's already back walking. This is huge. Now, yeah. I'm so excited. Sorry, go ahead, Julie. No, no, no. I know the team is really excited for him. They were hoping, they said he picked up some speed, which was one of the things that they wanted mm -hmm. to get from him. So I know they were really relying on him and hoping he was going to come out and compete with AGG for that spot. But this this really promising to see that. It's I very love it. promising. You know, I'm, I'm happy to see him, you know, progressing and mm -hmm. stuff. And um, I know what it's like to have those knee injuries. I didn't have an ACL, so I don't know what they go, you know, what the guys go through with that. But just seeing him in that pool, I remember those pool workouts when I was coming back from my injury, man. You know, those things right there are very encouraging to a guy, and that gives you hope that you can get out there uh, faster than what's, you know, you know, what's said. Logan, I just wish there was a pool right now because we are, we're melting out here. <laughs> All right, oh my gosh, uh, yeah. you have some questions for us, correct? Yes. So okay. last week, we had so much fun answering your questions last week, and we're going to keep this up on a weekly basis. So be on the lookouts for tweets from us asking us to, we want to hear your questions. We want to get you guys involved. But we are going to kick things off with Coach Rivera. So Tim Meek tweeted at us, what's been the biggest impact of Coach Rivera on his players since training camp has started? Now, I personally think morale has been super high. And one thing that Coach Rivera and all of the coaches have been pressing throughout this training camp is competition. And I think this really motivates all the players to train their hardest and be the best that they can be on the, fa on the field day in and day out. Julian Santana, what do you think Coach's impact has been so far? I think his impact has been what you expect of a head coach. He's setting the tone. He's setting the tone of what he expects from his players. Uh, many times I've been in locker rooms or been in, you know, uh, been on teams where the head coach, you know, is that uh, disciplinarian that that allows you to, I mean, that lets you know from the start that hey, I'm I'm, I'm expecting certain things. If you don't do that, then you're not going to be here. Uh, he's the right guy for what we're looking forward to seeing in Washington. That's change. All right, I agree. All right, moving on to question number two. Brian tweeted at us, lots of unknown talented, talent drafted by Washington. Are the rules any different this offseason to help teams evaluate their rookies during the unusual preseason? I'd hate to lose talent to another team because they didn't have more time to play and be seen. Now, I think having no preseason is going to be really hard for these rookies and these unknown players that we don't know much about. Santana, as someone that has been through preseason games, how do you think this is going to affect the players? It's going to affect them a lot. I think it's going to affect the, the evaluation from the team, too, from their perspective when it comes down to really uh, having something to really grade these guys off of. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, that we're dealing with these circumstances and the different measures that we have to go through to have a season. So with all that said, I think, you know, when you look at the bright side of everything, you know, you, you're probably going to have now a list of guys that you couldn't, you know, hold down that you can say, hey, you know, not knowing what these, you know, circumstances are going to cause us to, you know, change or swift into throughout the season. We have to lean, have a certain amount of guys that we can keep where no other team can, you know, you know, get hold of these guys because they're not on our team. So I'm interested to see in what what goes on down the line once these teams are made out, because it's impossible to really pick your team off of just practicing. Yeah, and they're bringing what we just said we started the show. They're bringing in free agents to work out that maybe they weren't able to do before with COVID. So we'll be able to evaluate that talent as well. I think the, the players that are active on game day is expanded because of COVID. You have up to 90 minutes is with any injury to be able to say they can switch that. So there'll be opportunities, but look, it's unlike any other season. This is unprecedented. And of course, depth is going to matter uh, going forward. What's next, Logan? All right, next up, low down got gut bucket. That's a fun name tweeted, has Julie checked out what other sports are doing with virtual media? And what has she seen that she'd like to add to our game plan virtually? Now we all see every other team's content, but Julie, I know that this has been a big goal of yours. You wanna bring original content that no one has ever seen before. And I know we touched on this at the beginning of the show. Washington let everyone know today that fans will not be allowed in the stadium this season. 
So would you like to touch on again what you what you're gonna bring this season for the fans to enjoy from the safety and comfort for the from their homes? We're so excited. Look, this is the world where you're watching us right now. You're going to be able to get so much more of that. We want to make sure we are with you wherever your device, your screen is, your phone, your tablet, your computer, even at home, you'll be able to get us. So uh, it's unprecedented to be able to bring so much digital coverage on all of our platforms. We're going to be behind the scenes because you can't get to the players. We can't even get to the players, but we're going to have them go home with cameras and kind of film things, film their workouts. Uh, you know, we're going to make sure that we bring you coverage from every aspect. Of course, on game day, we're going to be streaming that. I've got D'Angelo Hall in the booth, Bram Weinstein calling the plays. Um, we've got series going on. We'll be breaking down the X's and the O's, talking about their diets, their workouts. Uh, fans are not going to be lacking for content no. this season. I can guarantee you that. So, yes, we have our eyes on everything out there. If you have any ideas, bring them on because no. we're, we're willing to do and try anything to make sure that fans at home are happy. Yeah, like you said, we want to we bring you guys whatever you want to see. Something I'm really excited about is this unfiltered series that we're coming out with. That's really going to be behind the scenes content that no one has ever seen before. So I'm super excited about that. But moving on to the next question. LJ tweeted, how is the chemistry building with guys like Chase Young, Ruben Foster, and Jonathan Allen, considering the social distancing rules? Now, I think the D-line probably has one of the best chemistries on this team. That's something that's been talked about throughout training camp. And when Chase Young first came in, they took them under their wings immediately. And they, they are a tight-knit group. We all know that. And Chase Young has the same mentality and just really fit in right away. Julian Santana, what do you guys think about this D-line's chemistry? I mean, Tana, the D-line, for years, there, a lot of them are really right from here as well, yeah. you know, from the area. John Allen went to school just a couple miles away from here. Chase Young, obviously, being from here as well. Um, they pride themselves on saying, you know what, we want to have that. We want to make sure that when we go into the season, the chemistry is there. So I think Chase just fits right into that mold. Yeah, I think they understand also that um, they are, you know, you know, when it comes down to the strength of this team, you know, from the last few years, they've been the strength. And when you add a, a key weapon like Chase, you, you only can just say, hey, open, you know, add him with open arms saying, hey, we need you. We got you here to solidify, you know, what we've been trying to do for the last few years. So um, they've been very close. And, and that's why I say the competition level is only going to, you know, rise everybody's, you know, level of play. And I'm looking forward to it, man. These guys show brotherhood on and off the field. And I'm just waiting for everything to connect for these guys. All right, we got one last question for you guys, and this one's a really fun one. JR tweeted, who will be that dark horse to make the 53-man roster? Now, I'm going to go with Antonio Gandhi-Golden, and I know he's a rookie, but this is a name that we've constantly been hearing throughout training camp. We've heard it from Dwayne Haskins. We've heard it from wide receivers coach Jim Hostler. Now, he's a big physical guy he has that big build that Kelvin Harmon had and I think that this season he will pose a huge red zone threat Julian Santana who do you guys got as your dark horse oh he's in there for me he's in yeah. the mix he's right there yeah I'm kind of I'm up in the air right now I don't have one I think by the time things unfold mm -hmm. with camp I, I, I will have one but right now it's just kind of hard because they haven't even got to the thick of things and um, when it comes to just Looking at guys, I've been a great evaluator when it comes to looking at some of these young guys. So I want to give some of these other guys a chance before I pick somebody. I know. I, I kind of have to agree with that, too. Even though I talk to a lot of different players as well, it's like, who should we look out for? What do you think? And they, it's just the same answer. Like, pads aren't on. Helmets aren't even on. It's so hard to tell. So I think, in the words of Ryan Kerrigan, next week we'll have a better answer for that for everybody. <laughs> so just bring that question back each, each Every week. Every week, we'll bring be, it back to We'll us. be bringing something. <laughs>